Welcome to podcast. <laughs> Welcome to podcast. <laughs> Welcome to podcast. <laughs> Our podcast. My name is Katie. My name is Ashley. And I'm Ma. We are Kinks and Cocktails. Um, we are a podcast that explores a different kink every episode. And this episode <laughs> is about puppy play. Arf, arf. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a lot even for me, and I'm being sober right now. <laughs> I would like to be drunker for this. <laughs> well, we're working on it because every episode we pair it with a cocktail pairing, and this episode we're doing a drink called the Pink Poodle. If you'd like to learn how to make it, go follow us on TikTok at Kinks and Cocktails. All right. So, should I start? Yeah, go ahead and give us a definition. Uh, puppy play. Yeah, puppy play is where a human takes on the persona of a puppy. So playing fetch, playing with two toys. Traditionally, there's a handler or a trainer that are involved with insisting with like putting on gear, getting out of the headspace of being a puppy, and tends to any medical needs or anything along those lines. Um, do you want me to explain? human puppies and all of that? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just know you had like... Well, then we... No, we decided to wait. On terminology. Yeah. But so it's... That would be terminology. Yeah. Okay, okay so let's wait. Well, I have a fun I'm fact. Sorry, now you have to that out. That's okay. I got a fun fact. Um, so this one actually does have an app. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's called Pup Space. And so a few weeks ago when I was looking into it, there was 26,000 members. Wow. And at that time, they were not accepting Mm -hmm. new people. Um, But now I just checked again, like last night, and they are. Nice. And I also found another website called SoCalCreatures.com. And this one's actually founded by a queer female identifying person. And they created it because the pup community is mainly in the gay male I'm sorry. So I thought that was cool. No, that's really cool. I didn't realize that there were. I mean, I wonder what constitutes it when they open it back up for more people to come in and join the app. Yeah, I'm not sure why it was closed for a while, but it was a secret close at one time. Maybe. Gated community. I saw (laughs) a lot of people talking about it on like YouTube and everything. So I think that was, it was just a lot of people rushing to the site at once and they just mm-hmm. got overwhelmed. That yeah. makes sense. Can I say my favorite quote before we start? Yeah. Check. Sure. If everybody loves a puppy, I'm a puppy. And I'm, I'm a puppy, everyone. Okay, let's restart that. <laughs> if everybody loves a puppy and I'm a puppy, then everybody will love me. Oh, that's actually pretty cute. That's adorable. <laughs> I like that. Um, going into history. Yeah. Suppose, I'm excited to hear history at this one. The deep down. <laughs> um, basically, what I found is that animal role play has like been around since the beginning of time. Like you can find it in like old scriptures, you can find it in like cave markings. There's always been this role of people either like personifying these animals or like playing these as a role in like a play basically or even like taking on very structured characteristics of different animals which is really cool to see um even specifically like dogs in this case there's so many different like ancient rituals and stuff that specifically involve like howling at the moon and like doing different kinds of things and like people really got into that which is really cool awesome even going as like into the 19th century and like 20th century, um, the really cool thing that I found is that the oldest photograph that has ever been taken um, was 
of like a person role playing an animal in like a fetish fetishized area, basically, was a woman in France in 1912 in a leopard print underwear with a cat tail on it. I love that. <laughs> Um, and then basically there was like this really big divide that happened between, um, basically puppy play and like what it used to be like slave, like slave dog, that sort of situation. Um, and it really didn't happen that those things separated and you actually learned and like went into puppy play rather than slave, which I will say is more of, um, I guess the way to describe it is like giving everything to one person and being, I don't have a really great description, Um, but being a slave is just being able to have your caretaker and doing everything for them, no matter what they ask for. And there was like dog slave at that point, especially like 1900 up until like about World War II area, 1940s. And then after that, I feel like puppy play really emerged as like this puppy energy of like people finding themselves and like being really excited about it and having fun with that and not doing it just for the aspect of like serving someone but really having like the embodiment of like being a puppy yourself which was really cool in 1977 was the first like real like video footage of pups that were in hoods with um solid cast rubber which was really cool as well because like you can find that still on youtube which is awesome I want to see that. I'm going to have to look. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Um, and then even into like the 80s and 90s, puppy play started to like enter the pony scene, which was already pretty established at that point, which is kind of crazy even just like how different animals and things kind of like got established before that. And then it really started to pick up into the 90s where like the UK and England just like took off, basically. Um Dungeon in the Sky was a really big show. So in 1995 was the first year they actually had um, three contest three contestants in a dog show. Oh, Dungeon in the that's a that's what a, is that? That's so that's a convention that was going on in um, England at the time. Okay. Um, specifically kink related. Okay. They ended up having a dog show specifically for puppies and um, their masters and being able to and like handlers, I guess. And being able to um, go through that. Yeah, I did come across the actual dog shows and stuff. I thought that was really fun. No, it's super cool. <laughs> um, and even just to go into that, like, the, so there's puppies and then there's also handlers. Um, I think we have a definition for handlers, just to, like, throw that I out there. I do have that. Um, the human is a human that takes care of the puppies. Um, so, yeah, so they were really involved and in, like, even seeing They're that. the ones that tell you they're, you're a good boy. <laughs> you are such a good boy <laughs> or girl and or human yeah puppy not be fucked up <laughs> whatever you identify as you're a good one right <laughs> such a good one the best but yeah so that happened and like they had the whole three contestants and then literally the next year that doubled and they had eight which is crazy yeah and so that was blowing up in england and the uk in general and then in 19 19- 97 the first like workshop actually happened where like people were teaching it to other people in the uk which is super cool do you mean like like training classes yeah like training classes. oh wow <laughs> With, like handlers and puppies and like teaching people like how to further embody that which is cute really cool. um and that year also um the doghouse.org was founded and that was like one of the oldest websites for puppy play in general which is really cool they had a lot um information and stuff i feel like that people could actually reach out to and then in 98 it become came more even more mainstream because it actually showed up on will and grace in an episode really yeah check it out it's actually season one episode eight and Ooh, it was really in it too right totally. i'm gonna write that down because i want to watch this one now what was it season one Ep- or episode eight episode eight okay um so yeah, I would totally recommend checking that out. And it's just like a little blurb about it and super funny. Um then, well and Grace. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Then in the two thousands, just more websites came along with like leatherdog.com was founded. Two thousand one was like the first pup flag was announced, which is really cool. And that one even looks really cool. It's like older style where it's like brown stripes and like has a paw print on it, which is cute. It's very like reminiscent of what it looks like now, but 
a little bit different. Well, the the flag now is blue and black. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I saw something kind of funny about that, where I'm not sure if it was true or not, or if it was just a skit, but this guy on TikTok um, thought it was a cop pride flag because oh they're similar looking, <laughs> and so he was like, he had it like on his truck, and like he was wondering <laughs> why all these gay like pup community people kept like. Talk to him about it and stuff, and like right. he was really confused. I thought it was hilarious. It astounds me how many people get the um, Blue Lives Matter flag mixed up with Leather Pride, even just by itself. Oh yeah, and that's... then you get the paw print involved, and it's like, who knows? What does this mean? <laughs> what a mystery! I just went really for the canine unit. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. So yeah, when that flag, when the first flag was announced, um, that was actually at the first international puppy convention, otherwise known as like IC, IPC, um, in Houston, Texas, actually. So that was a really cool thing to see as well. And that was like early 2000s. And then they had their first documentary come out in like 2002, which was literally just labeled Pup by Tim Ham Hamilton. And that was really cool as well, because I don't think it originally started as a documentary exclusively about puppy play, but then he got so interested in puppy play and so enamored by it that it just ended up creating, which is really cool. Um, and then, yeah, basically the modern pup flag, which again is like based off of the leather community, which is a really big part of think, where puppy play came oh, yeah. from. Um, that was in 2011 when that came out, which is really cool. That's not too long ago. No, no. lots of progress made in just like the last, you know, 10 years. Then again, I think 30 years ago was like 1970s. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, being a millennial. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so, for like, I was some good history. Yeah, I liked all that. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't realize how far back it went. And um, look at you go. All of the, <laughs> like, so pretty. Right. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Great history lesson. Well, Thanks for that. It's so good. The more you know. When you're chewing <laughs> ice on the... <laughs> I'm an ice chewer as well. I understand. <laughs> so for a lot of the um, psychology, a lot of people just like it for... There's a bunch of different reasons. Some people use it for sexual pleasure. Some people use it for relaxation therapy and escape from them, them, their normal self, their day-to-day. Physicality, physical touch, moving people around. Some of them actually wrestle with other puppies. Moshing. Moshing, that's what it's called. called. Yeah. I had it written down somewhere, not in this little. Um, what specifically is moshing? Did you write that one down? Um, I did. It's. There's a bug on the floor. Sorry, <laughs> Why didn't that happen during a war episode? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, let's see. For definition for moshing, I have it's a specific place at an event where pups strictly interact with other pups, like a dog park, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's typically no human acting; like they only act like a dog. Like they communicate through, like a dog. There's no human talk. So it's a little specific area to be fully immerse into the dog and usually fight. handlers aren't allowed in that area right they're so. like off to the side like talking to other handlers like you would at a dog park you know just let the dogs play and yeah oh your dog could be gentle <laughs> yeah so they usually cool. like lick and nuzzle and tackle each other and play that sounds like a cute time um and then the last one i had was like relationships and community because even in Minneapolis, we have a big puppy community. We have, um, we do. I'm sorry. We have Minneapolis, um, the North Star Kennel Club. Okay. That one's a big one. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard of them before. Uh, they are always at Pride. Mm -hmm. They have their big flag with them. They walk through the Pride Parade, too, mm -hmm. so you've probably seen them there. That makes sense. But I also have other kennels in different cities yeah that's how far i went <laughs> yeah Ooh. it's all over the place yeah so i have chicago puppy patrol i thought that one was fun that's, uh, that's a cute name <laughs> a lot of them are just pups and handlers so there's denver pups and handlers portland pups and handlers is that like the same 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? The same uh, group, this different cities? cities. That's what I'm assuming. Okay. Um, San Diego has one. The Se- uh, Seattle, and then there's all one in Vancouver. Wow. Okay. And then Black Eagle in Toronto. I came across. I think it was that one, the Eagle one. Yeah. Oh no, there, no. There's also a gay bar in Las Vegas called the Eagle that I came across a lot. They have a lot of events there too. Yep, they do. Um, Black Eagle is in Toronto, and they have um, a lot of events as well. So. Yeah, actually, here there's Pinky Friday is doing like a animal play event. Right. Oh, way after that, I'm so sorry. Guys. I know. <laughs> well, if you went, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. Looks like a good time. Yeah, and then I also found pup play or pup space that popped up on my random thing. Yeah. Um. I have so many different notes. I'm just trying to figure out what. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. But um, a lot of puppies get into it as a way to like an, oh, help overcome anxiety and social discomfort. Um, each puppy has their own personality. Possonality. I was just going to say, I saw that was called a possonality. I thought that was so <laughs> cute. <laughs> um, I saw some that were bouncy and playful or shy and quiet. Some can be aggressive, but I, didn't really, I haven't really seen many aggressive puppies out and about in my world. But I feel like, if anything, I've heard a lot about, like, even with looking stuff up, that, like, it's not necessarily aggression, but it's, like, older pups. It's like more in the dogs that are like yeah. a little bit more stoic, a little bit quieter, don't necessarily want to play, but like are just there and a little bit more standoffish. I came across this that as well. Yeah, the older dogs are more obedient and kind mm-hmm. of like typically, yeah, like a way a, an old dog would be. But I mean, every dog has its day. <laughs> <laughs> See what else do I got? Oh, uh, I have a lot of their gear, if you guys care to know. I that. got a lot about that. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, you can go over it. I mean, is that the last thing you have? So we yeah. can just I can just start? Yeah, you can just start. Okay. All right. I guess I'll move on to common practices. And yeah, all their gear, their attire, which I want to start off by saying, of course, is not required. All pups are welcome with or without the gear. You know, it's all about being in a headspace and... But the attire is always a fun added thing. So there's headgear, which is also called a hood, or you can have a muzzle, or both. It's usually made about a bleh. it's usually made of leather. Although I did see a really cool, realistic looking one. I'm not sure what it was made out of. It was a Dalmatian though. Um, it looked like it's made out of like plaster. Like it looked like a real. Oh. Could have been. Dog head. I feel like I should show you. What's the line between that and a furry? So they do they can cross over. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot of like leather and stuff and like bondage right. style looking gear. Um some I saw lots of hoods with like piercings and spikes on it. Oh, cool. There's like pink ones if you want to be like a little more, you know, really about it or whatever. Um but yeah, furries, well, moth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can say the difference. <laughs> I mean, it would probably be that furries aren't probably necessarily kink related, right? Like, at the end of the day. I just wonder, like, if the craftsman, the craft, 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 craftsmanship um, probably overlaps something, which is kind of interesting. Do you think the same person that makes uh, puppy hoods is the same person that makes a very furry head? Definitely not. <laughs> That's what I've asked. I did not see any crossover stores, but it could be the same person, two different stores. I mean, and I think it's also probably important to note that, like, Puppy Play was probably born out of the leather community pretty specifically. Um, and it was pretty heavily dominated, I feel like, by men. You know what I mean? In yes. the gay community. Uh, 18 to 30-ish, I think that's what I have. Yeah. 18 to 30, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you know that rubber masks are usually not very recommended for... Is that because it can get hot? It can get hot, and you can sweat, and you can faint. Yeah, that was part of... I have safety tips, too, and that was one of them, to stay hydrated with your puppy bowl or whatever, have you? Um, But yeah, because all that gear can get really hot. 
but um, let's see, collars. So a lot of them are collared and like usually, not always, but typically a padlock or like a personalized tag means that that puppy is owned by somebody already. I think that'd be cute and fun to get a like personalized tag if you are mm -hmm. owned. <laughs> I like that. What is being owned? Having like a handler, a handler, yeah. and like one specific um, mm -hmm. handler, pup or not. Um, yeah, so you're not a stray. A stray is something else that came across mm -hmm. where they are just there. They're not owned by anybody. They're just there to play with everyone. And just good dogs. Yes, such a good boy. Good <laughs> So some, let's see. I did come across like some more extreme stuff like shock collars, Ooh. but for safety reasons, they're typically not worn around their neck. They just wear them like around their thighs so they can still experience it, but mm -hmm. it's play safely. Always play safely, everyone. Please do. Communicate. Yes. <laughs> Have a safe word. <laughs> right, exactly. Communication is key. I would say wolf would not be a safe word for this type of way. <laughs> To each their own, but <laughs> so tails. I found some really fun tails. Um, there's obviously the butt plug ones, you know, and yeah, there was the furry style ones. <laughs> <laughs> there was the furry style ones, and I actually came across a mechanical one. That one was fun. Did you see that, that one? It was like so. It was actually worn by like a belt, so you wrap it around mm -hmm. you, and then. It had a remote, and so it was furry, it was robotic, and it lit up, and different buttons did different things. Obviously, you can make the tail wag. You can have it, like, sit straight up, like, if you're excited. Go with, like, your emotions. Yeah. That's so cute. Or you can go have it's it down. Really cute puppy, and you're all excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting scratches. <laughs> that was really fun. That was, that was cool. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, pet suits so I even saw some people wore I mean typically some people just wear street clothing regular clothes or leather gear um, or morph suits so there's a company that makes morph suits that have tails or detachable tails mm -hmm. that look like the actual dog they have those. like little beans on their fingers and feet and like so do yeah. they have them for like specific kinds of dogs? Yes. Yeah. Like one would look like a husky, or the one I saw looked like a husky. But yeah. Dalmatians, or there's a wolf one. Oh, those like are a cute. Husky. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be more comfortable than leather gear for playing, but to each their own. Listen, if leather is your bread and butter, yeah, it is recommended to wear very tight clothing for moshing and everything, so then it doesn't. Like if you're wearing baggy clothing and rip right. in oh, from the yeah. scene type of thing. I see. So wearing like a morph type suit would be very good practice for moshing. That's a good point. So knee pads are important uh, for safety for like because you're crawling around. I can't imagine not wearing knee pads unless you're into that. Maybe you like the pain. Some nice bruised knees. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I have those in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I should ask. I was just gonna say, <laughs> uh, dare I ask why? <laughs> if you want to know the real reason, call and bit me on your knee, on my knee, on my thigh, on the back of my. Why? Knee. He was drunk. <laughs> your hustle into the fort, though, immaculate. Because it's not even that when you're breezy, bree <laughs> it's been like two weeks. They're just not going away. Like, I think you're immune. Maybe. Yeah, that's those are big bruises. You can't yeah. see this one. So in case somebody's wondering what we're talking about with the fort, <laughs> I made us a vor fort out of blankets and stuff. So we can make a TikTok for the vor episode we did last episode. Crawling into the vor tummy fort. It was fun. There's a puddle in there. Yeah. It was a tight squeeze. Hot. Get it? All right. I'm done. <laughs> Okay, I also saw a really cute um, 
It was like a dog bone shaped gag ball. Oh, <laughs> so like, cute. yeah, so it looks like they're holding like a bone in their mouth. It was really cute. And also glow, glow in the dark. So that was fun. You'll never lose your puppy in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> and some dogs wear chastity devices to prevent humping on other people's legs. <laughs> yeah. This goes deep. Yep. <laughs> I love that. So I made a list of both sexual and non-sexual activities you can do as a dog with your with or without your owner. So non-sexual ones. Well, first I guess I should note that any of these things can be sexual for any person. It's their own live your best life. Yeah. So if this is sexual for you, awesome. But typically I'm just going over typically non-sexual things. So going for a walk on a leash, practice or perform tricks, grooming and brushing, swimming, cuddling, chewing on toys like squeak toys, getting treats, pet scratches and whoops. <laughs> Just love the boops, Katie. Hate them? <laughs> Never boot me, please. I like them. You were so mad at Colin the other day. Oh, God. I, no, because booped her. Yeah. And <laughs> I, like, ran and hid behind me. You, behind Ashley. Yeah, and I was just, like, trying to hold, keep my calm, like, Colin. <laughs> Is it a boop trauma? No, I don't know why I don't like it. I don't like head pats, and I don't like boops. I, I don't know why. I, I will give them to you, but I do not like them received. <laughs> Let's see. Pouncing. Chewing on beef jerky. I like to do that. I know. Uh, if you, if you, it's a good time. I mean, right. if you want to chew an actual real dog treats, I, I typically I think they're safe for human consumption. I'm not sure. Depends do not take the... my advice, please. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I think some are and some are. <laughs> please do your research before you just. Hey, Katie's advice on dog <laughs> trees. Just crunching. Please do not go grocery shopping at Petco um, <laughs> for yourself. You can make things look like dog treats. Like there's a dog yeah. treat that's more I would assume, right. safe for humans. Or use like a dog bone cookie cutter or something mm -hmm. to make your own. But like the like apple cider vinegar, or not apple cider vinegar ones, like the applesauce ones in like applesauce cookies is a lot of people give their dogs. You can make yeah. those ones. Those ones are safe. Again, do not take our advice, but please yeah, apple do sauce. your research. <laughs> apple sauce is fine for you to eat. <laughs> well, I know. I just <laughs> legally, I don't want anybody. Yeah. No, don't do this. <laughs> beef jerky. <laughs> just eat beef jerky. So like, they do make vegan beef jerky now too. So if you're vegan, yeah, you can eat it too. I saw that it's recently. Not good, no, you tried it. Yeah. No, I also tried it. I did not like it. What was it like a? texture thing or just the taste no, was bad the, taste. the texture is not bad it is pretty probably similar to actual beef jerky but the taste is not there it no. does not taste like i think it's it's like when imitation meat is trying to be meat it's a bad time but when it stops trying to be meat and just like does its own thing it's delicious every time you know yeah i get that this one was just very uh, almost vinegary like just straight vinegar tasting Ooh, that i wonder why it was so vinegary it's typically, jerky is not. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. My coworker they're was trying like, to make it salty or something. Try this, and I said, okay. And they're like, it's good. And I was like, it's not. I mean, I love vinegar, but not vinegar jerky. That does not sound. It good. wasn't good. <laughs> Zero out of five stars. All right. Let's see. Um, moving on from jerky, you can eat or drink out of a bowl. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can wrestle around with other pups or with your owner. You can play fetch. Uh, let's see. You can. So some things that are a little bit more sexual on that side. A little bit. <laughs> a bit. Caging. You can be put in your cage mm -hmm. if you've been a bad boy. Or girl. You know. Bad pup. Bad pup. How dare you. <laughs> so this one was. Uh... All right. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. You can put peanut butter on certain parts and lick it off. 
Like oh, dogs love. Butter, don't do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a nut allergy. <laughs> So yeah, you can do that with your owner. Sniffing private parts. I'm just still stuck on the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dogs love peanut butter and licking it off. Not private parts, but walls and stuff like that. So turn this sexually and you can have your own fun. Listen, you just gotta double down. Okay. I mean, it's normalized for like whipped cream and stuff right. like that. So like, you know, like yeah. anything off your body. I'm not just gonna say that now. I agree with you on that, but yeah. Okay. Boring. Boring. <laughs> Sex in public. <laughs> not Mom, even like this. Not even like a shot. Do you like do body shots? I did that once, and you know what I got in my mouth? Hair. Mickey does a hairy man. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you do it like I was belly button? Yeah, he's a hairy man. A hairy belly button. He's hairy, oh. like animal. <laughs> Zero out of ten recommend body shots. Okay, well maybe you just need a smoother man to be eating food off of. Yeah, oh, this is a smooth man, and I'd still find gross things in that belly button. You cannot tell <laughs> me I would. A smooth and clean man <laughs> with a clean it's, belly button. I don't right. know those. Have you met my friends? <laughs> oh, I apologize. My condolences. <laughs> I wouldn't even do it off of your man. <laughs> he furry. Yeah. Yeah, I would not <laughs> That's going to get stuck places. Got to get it out somehow. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, this next note is, uh, well, it, it just keeps getting worse. Well, let's just keep going. Yeah, double down. So a lot of these leather suits are good for any sort of liquid. Showers of the gold, if you will. Yeah. 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 So, or just, you know, lifting up your leg and going like a dog would, mm -hmm. you can do that. Or number two, if you're into that sort of thing. Say that so tentatively. <laughs> showers are bad. No. I feel like arguably peanut butter is scarier to me. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. I feel like everyone's been beat on at least once. Yeah. Right. At least, like, even on accident. <laughs> yeah. Call and peanut butter my legs and then left all over you. <laughs> Zero to ten. Mine was more purposeful of an experience. But that's okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Mom, once again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we do not kink shame here. I do. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, it is not entirely safe. <laughs> hey, kink shaming is what I think it's fine. I have the right. <laughs> you can kink shame me back. I get it. Oh, there we go. Never thought of it that way. <laughs> Ashley's kink is being kink shamed. <laughs> I like kink shaming and I like to be kink shamed. Public humiliation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all right. 10 out of 10 would recommend. It's a party now. <laughs> so you can do like barking as like a safe word, but in like a way, know your dog's bark. <laughs> you can have a bark for like no and a whimper for yes or the opposite i guess it would be depending but every owner knows their dog's barks and what they mean mm -hmm. so you can use yeah use that as communication um you can also adopt a dog not just own you can adopt a dog for an evening or you know, I suppose it'd be like picking one up at. Oh, they're telling me it was such a good puppy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do I, how do you do that? Like, if you're at a puppy event and you want to hook up for the night, you can adopt a dog and you can guys to make the arrangement and yeah. Or if you are a couple or a group couple, poly couple, whatever have you, you can adopt a dog for the evening. So, like, you know how it typically be called a unicorn? Mm hmm. I guess it'd just be adopting a dog for the night, not a unicorn. So, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's it for common practices. Uh, I do have some rules that you should follow for events. Yeah. Um, they typically don't make spikes because you could puncture your other puppies. Uh -huh. um, minimal clothing, so tight clothing, something yeah. that you're not going to rip and tear. Um, show caution for food allergies. I would warn people before you 
become a puppy because if someone just has shellfish and you guys are sharing a tug of war toy. Oh, oh, that makes sense. Did not even think of that. Wow. If you're allergic to peanut butter, and, you know, yeah. if someone just had licked their peanut butter off their owner. Right. <laughs> Um, protective gear is recommended, not necessary, but knee pads, uh, hand pads, because mm-hmm. you're not supposed to be on your hands that long. You can. That is one thing I forgot to cover. Yes, the hand pads. Um, mm-hmm. they're really cute. They look like little paws. Yeah. Them. And then just, you know, play safe. Those are the main ones that I saw. All good advice, for sure. Don't be dumb. Be kind. Be kind. You unless know, unless you're an aggressive dog, every dog has to say. You know. <laughs> what? Uh, so I did do a poll on Fat Life Ooh. in their puppy play group. <clears throat> I asked everyone what type of dog they identify as and why. Oh, oh, cool. So I can give you some answers that were the most common, and some that were not so common actually. Let's see, I've got. A Australian Shepherd cross with Bernese Mountain Dog. Oh. Because they're big and goofy. I love oh. that. <laughs> a lot of people said they were a mutt. Um, a Norwegian elk hound. I don't know what that looks like. I don't either. I don't either. I'm going to Google it. Yeah, I want to see. But some of these were very specific. Like, yeah. I appreciate that. Honestly, mm-hmm. I feel like. I don't know. Get your personality. Like, figure out what fits. Possibility. Possibility. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. They are so cute. We have a picture. Look at that junky little burger. Aww. Oh, my God. That is adorable. We also have a black Norwegian elk elk. And... Oh. Can you pronounce it? No. <laughs> Gemma- 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 we apologize. But they're all cute. Adorable. Yeah. Everyone looks at the Norwegian <laughs> elk hound if you don't know what it already looks like. It's adorable. Let's see. Pitbull, bulldog, a pug. I would love to see the pug's hood mask. Right. <laughs> cute. A Great Dane because they're a big dog thinking they're a small dog. <laughs> Lots of Dalmatians. One person said that they're a Dalmatian because they were a Disney nerd. <laughs> <laughs> a Golden Retriever, Rottweiler, Husky Arctic Wolf Hybrid. Oh, you did find a pug. <laughs> Ashley looked up a pug hood mask, and wow, it's all scrunchy it's from and cute. Rough and stuff, in case you were curious. Good job, rough and stuff. I like it. <laughs> so cute. Some of those were St. Bernard and Poodle. Um, I did talk to a puppy at Prime. You did? Um, just one, because he was not with a pack, and that didn't scare me. Uh, <laughs> there was just too many puppies at once, and I was too excited, or too worried that they'd get too excited and all bombard me. So I uh, <laughs> found one by him long Um I asked him if he preferred head pats or belly scratches, and he said belly scratches were too personal, so preferred head pats. Okay. Um, his favorite choice was his ankle restraints. His uh, what? Ankle restraints. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then what was the other question I asked him? Oh, what got him into puppy play? And he uh, said it was just he always liked crawling on the ground and running around. So simple as that. Yeah. I was like, okay. Awesome. That's so and cool that you I ran to away because a bunch of other puppies came and <laughs> that me out again. So <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. You got to talk to one. Yeah. He was very nice. He was a very good boy. If he identifies as a boy, sorry if you don't. <laughs> um, but every puppy I've met has been super nice. I feel like I've never met a puppy that has not been no. very kind. Yeah, I think I've met a couple briefly at like the saloon, like their fetish playground nights, or like yeah. even like Goth Prom. I think there was one there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that one at uh when we went for your. Bachelor, bachelorette puppy party. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have that was a word slip. That was a word slip. Singular. I did not. Bachelorette puppy. I did not one. have a puppy themed bachelor bachelorette party. <laughs> that sounds like fun though. Um, it was leather night there. Can I have a redo? 
yeah, they had the shower shows going and it was um, a good it was a good time the night before we got married to do that. Yeah. yeah, you're the one that didn't have to see the back room. There was a lot going oh, on. Oh, did you there. accidentally walk in there too? No. My friend was working the door and he was like, Hey Ashley. And I was like, Why would you do that? Usually they make you sign a waiver, but Danny has stumbled back there on accident once. Like and they did not make him sign a waiver and he's like, Oh. Um Okay. So there is a another restroom back there so a lot of girls go back there because yeah it's the one with a stall door <laughs> yeah and it's it's yeah where was the saloon oh okay never been no, really the rest no. of their bathrooms don't have a stall and i have walked in on people i mean i've used a good time <laughs> i've used those bathrooms because the other bathroom lines is like 20 people long i'm like screw it so i don't care what bathroom i use just have sex on the urinal, please. So right. I can go pee in the toilet. <laughs> I cannot squat over a urinal, guys. That's a difficult thing to do. I would love to try. I'm gonna, you know, I'm just getting a shiwi for whatever. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. Any one of those little cone things. Shiwi. Perfect. Yep. Sponsor us. Please. <laughs> we'll talk all about you. Yes. At and the saloon. Have praises about the shiwi. <laughs> so if what. I guess what puppy would you two be if you were to partake in puppy play? Oh god. Um lab. Why? Uh because they're big and stupid. <laughs> and they <laughs> <You're> dissing yourself. <laughs> Just like double the <laughs> You're keep shaming yourself. You're just shaming yourself. Uh they're fun, loving, and obnoxious. Have you met a lab? That yeah. until they're old. And that tracks. That's lazy. That's very you. Yes. Obnoxious. And we love you. <laughs> It'd be great. I can only think of. Um. Uh, no. You want me to say? <laughs> I'll say mine while you think. Yes, please. So, it's actually funny because I thought of this before we came up with the cocktail pairing, and. It was my it is like a pink poodle because I think their haircuts are amazing. They are so cute. Yeah. So I know our poodles can't be be kind of mean. It depends. So that would not be me at all for that uh, part. I would just like the aesthetic. Like so. you, everyone knows, it's depending on how it's raised. So right. It depends on my owner. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've never met a mean poodle personally. Okay. I've only met very nice ones that are worth really well behaved. Okay. Okay. Comes by my salon all the time. Nice. Okay, I think I'd be a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Hear me out, because they got like funny little ears and they're like kind of athletic, but like not super. I'm like, mm. okay, anyway. <laughs> um, but no, I think that they're like the funny in between of like nobody ever thinks about them and they're kind of like background animals. And like also, I've always thought that my hair is the same texture as It is, ears. you're yeah. right. Um, and so like, I don't know why, but that's always been like my background animal of like, oh, we have the same hairstyle. Cute. I can see that. I like it. <laughs> so I, let's see, some other, I know we're doing specifically only puppy play, but I guess we should just mention that there are so, so many different other animals that you can play as. Did anybody come across anything like really unique? Um, like a type of animal? Like there's obviously the cats and the horses, but I came across um like those ones aren't important. <laughs> they're very important. I just we can cover them in a later episode. Yes, that's <laughs> saying. Well. But I saw somebody like to be a hamster. They like to run around in like a wheel, like a giant wheel. I love and, that. Uh, and like, I don't like exercise enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, I agree. Yeah. There's it was a certain cute, level though. of like hyperactivity that I think you have to have. For yeah. That, and I do not. And they would like hide underneath all their bedding and like, yeah. It was cute. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And as also somebody who liked to pretend to be or play as a pig. So they have a pig mask and mm -hmm. yeah. I like I've heard that before. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. heard that one. Like to get roll around in mud. Yep. Get dirty. Don't boot me with your muddy fingers. Special <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> Just boop Kate. <laughs> you know, if we ever become big enough 
I feel like I'm bringing this on to myself where oh, everybody has so <laughs> many boobs. We're just so going to do meet and greets and people are going to sexy. start boobing me. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to wear a shirt that says, please do not boob me. No I do not boobs. consent to boobs. <laughs> Anti-boob. Anti-boob. <laughs> I'll accept I your boobs. Definitely need a shirt. And and I was like, between the two of us, I think. <laughs> yeah, you, you can take all of mine. Time. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll take all of the boobs and the hump pets. I'll just watch. Don't rub my tummy. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the joy amongst all. <laughs> So speaking of like other animals, I did take that like silly quiz. I don't know. I got we had some. Wait, there's quiz. a quiz? What quiz? Yeah, I put it in the um Google Doc. Oh, what? Where? Oh. I don't look at the Google Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I love just the Google Doc. Like, I saw no quiz. Oh, okay. Well, I did add it just a few days ago. So. Oh, you what put in the group chat? Yeah. Okay. How dare you, Katie? I'm gonna go take it right now. Yeah, look it up and take it. I can edit out the. Pause in between. But I'll share my my results. It was what sexual animal do you what are you more or no. What animal sexuality are you? And I felt very like nineties, two thousands, like being a teenager taking those quizzes and like Cosmo. <laughs> but <laughs> so my quiz results, I was a tiger. Ah, there it is. I know this is sort of cheesy, but take this quiz. <laughs> you can all share our results. <laughs> Two and the reason why I was a tiger, it said, because you're a sexually raw, emotional tiger. Yeah, you are. Wow. <laughs> you're spontaneous and unpredictable in the best way. Trust your intuition and practice willpower. Counts only when the time is right. And then it said, rar. <laughs> Counts only when the time is right. Do I typically not count? I do not. Maybe. I, maybe I Maybe I'll learn something about myself. <laughs> what color best expresses your sexual appetite? Ooh. I don't know. Which how I feel. gift best re- represents your sex life? I just love this tiger. <laughs> it was actually a pretty fun quiz. I'm not gonna lie. <coughs> Next question. I don't want your stupid ad. Oh, there is an ad. <laughs> I'm like one question behind you. Oh, there wasn't. Oh, no, yeah, I think there was an ad. That one. I took it on the laptop, so. I don't like any of these beds. That one. I like. Do they have a bed? I'm just like, I want to drink one. I like really took my time and like really thought about every answer. (laughs) Oh, can you pass the puppy chair? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I guess we forgot to say we paired another food or snack with this episode puppy chow. I don't really believe in marriage now. <laughs> Bone talks, on the other hand, that works every time. <laughs> so I'd just like to point out the amount of time that I'm spending on this does not mean I'm not thinking about these questions seriously. <laughs> it just means I'm very quick. No. I guess the tiger does make sense for me because if I were to do some sort of play, I guess it'd be like cat, kitten. <laughs> not so. like other girls where I'm like be my boyfriend unless you were like yeah and then I'd be like maybe they're taking the quiz right now if you're wondering what all these <laughs> questions are why are there so many ads wait is there not one that's like I'm in a re- relationship what is all of this is this super funny I don't think it's me. <laughs> I just picked one at that point because I was like none of these really explain right where's the like we're both stupid and I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> the full package. I definitely like throw on with a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you guys are taking that, I did come across something most funny. I thought it was adorable when people puppies and their owners were being Aww. like interviewed oh wait do you have your answer i got tiger oh you got tiger too <laughs> Where is what are you i'm a unicorn oh yeah, you um you're a magical mysterious unicorn you're sexually imaginative and completely unashamed you connect with your partners on a deeper level giving you more mind-blowing sexual experiences oh fun so yeah get wrecked <laughs> Oh, Wait, what did I click on? What what quiz is this? Let's give me. Did you click next quiz. 
Apparently. We find out what this one is. I think we should move on. It's <laughs> time, <laughs> actually. We need to move on. That was fun, though. Unicorn. You're lucky. I like that. So I did come across something that was rather cute when puppies with their owners were getting like interviewed for documentaries. Sometimes they were holding their actual pet animal dog in their laps. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> that was so yeah. cute. Like, yes, we're in the puppy play, and here's our puppy, our actual puppy. <laughs> I, got I just want every to verify too that to clarify to clarify that like for people who are just learning about this for the first time, it has nothing to do with actual animals or bestiality. Mm-hmm. Puppy play. It is strictly role playing as a puppy, as a human. So don't worry. Please don't touch animals. Yes, please do not. Real animal, like real animal. <laughs> <laughs> Only consenting adults. Yes, <laughs> we're all about consent over here. I had something to say, and then you asked. Did I lose your train of thought? Yeah, you sure did. Was it rough? Like fault time. So with their dogs, moth is a unicorn. <laughs> Of course. I'm trying to bring it back oh, to you. Um, because you're talking about interviews. I watched a, it was like an American document, or it was like a newscast, and like there was one girl and she was all for it. She was like, look at all these puppies in UK and this big fancy thing. And then the guys were like, this isn't real. And what? I was like, I'm going to hit all of you. Wow. Lame. Um, I was going to add it to our notes and then I was like, nah. I like got five minutes in, and Colin's like, That guy looks like an asshole. And I was like, He is an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> so I got really mad and I shut it up. And they could have given me probably some really good information, but I was very mad about these. No, I don't blame you. I feel yeah. like that's just like cis white men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll just uh, ruining it for <laughs> everyone. Eggman? Is that what you said? No, I mean, you could. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't say that. I would never. <laughs> I was going to say, too, um, I was just thinking, like, my favorite puppy that, like, I've gotten the most experience, I feel like I've learned the most from is, I don't know if you, you guys came across, like, Amp and Mr. Christopher yes. on YouTube. Yeah. I'm in love with them. Yeah. More, yeah. One of them was older. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, they were great. Mr. Yes. Christopher is, like, the handler, and Amp has, like, this amazing YouTube channel of just, like, every kink sex thing it's amazing and they're very informative and like they make the stupidest puns weird i loved like, that about them of I course know. i did <laughs> i found them before this podcast okay they like popped up on oh, my yeah. it was like hey they you should up. watch this and i was like okay and then i was like why are you showing me wish things for sexy time okay you oh know that's right yes. i think they're the ones who had they had the mechanical tail yeah they did yeah so I didn't know they had a mechanical yeah, um, they that's had a Q and A for um, pop questions. So cool, mm-hmm. and, pop, uh, and that was more recent. Was that more recent? Yeah, yeah. I will say I used to watch them a lot when Wolf was on the channel too. Yep. So it was Amp and Wolf, and they were both puppies, and they're just the most fantastic people ever. Wolf back then was not when he was mainly on it. He was not. He didn't have a handler back then. No, he didn't. Yeah, they were some of my favorites. Puppy. Um. But yeah, they're, it's just fantastic. It was just such good content. I think my favorite was the jokes that they would always make. Yes. Like an ant. So they'd be like, ah, vault, ant, got it. Ah. Right. <laughs> it's like fun monsters. And it's amazing. It's I'm like, I, I'm right. It's very true. It's amazing. They're my favorites. Oh, so I wanted to say for. Nope, absolutely not. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel. So for the SoCal Creatures website, yeah. um, that's where I found like the pig. Mm-hmm. guy and they so it's creatures because they literally like have everyone yeah a huge variety of mostly queer identifying people um like I, lots of bunnies so a lot of bunnies on there bunnies i feel like have been growing in popularity in the last couple of years yeah i do like the bunny masks are they leather yes oh. the ones i saw oh. were yeah i like error in the side of like I don't know, cusping between furries and like pet play, I feel like. Yeah, so you just like ears, I feel like, though, for the most part. You don't know what I do in my free time. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I've seen you in their tails. I do have You've worn tails in seventh grade. I have. I wanted to be a wolf so bad, but I didn't have a pack. 
Nobody oh, will that's be you can that's really me. Only me. me. I had a, you, and that's you're a lone wolf. No, right? I wore my wolf tail, and then someone ripped it off of me and broke no. it, and then I never wore it again. That's not nice. I was one of those. Stress. I know. Well, that person should not have been one of those people. I agree. Um, but no, now I have a pretty good collection of like cat ears. I have my first pair of puppy ears I just recently got. Um, you need some ones that move. Right. Mm-hmm. I have um, some cat ears. There's Necromini, which is really popular. Yes, you have one of my old pair of cat ears. I can see. I'm going to find these when I move. Um, I put them in a box for now. But I find them this year. But the ones that move, there's ones that like connect to your brain waves and the move what? on your brain. Oh, waves. those are super cute. Um, That's amazing. It's called Necromimi, and they're literally like a pad that sticks to your forehead. And yeah, depending on how you're feeling, it'll like move and you can control it. And some people have gone so far of like being able to like think about certain things and that moves the ear and like, like purposeful make themselves waves. sad and then they're sad. Their yeah. ears will like look like they're sad. Totally. It's not That's amazing. As good as maybe we might hope, but like it's actually pretty cool, and I was pretty impressed. Me with like five years ago was like, was like cool. I mean, that is very five cool. years. It's probably gotten a lot better. Yeah, too. I hope so. That would be cool. And then I want to know how much those cost. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're actually that bad. I mean, we're ears in the wedding. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> I won't. Possum. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Can we bring? You can wear whatever you want. You're, I cannot type in your way. <laughs> she has to wear what you tell her to wear. <laughs> I mean, you can basically wear whatever you want. Naked it is. Got it. It's going to murder me. I dare you. Well, no, you're not. You did, middle of winter. <laughs> you did moon everybody outside at my wedding. So. Um, Listen. I also got your stepmom to twerk. Yeah. <laughs> I was also going to say, if not everyone has seen your titty by the end of the night, like that would be a goddamn miracle. Because that's how <laughs> You need an I easy access dress. Definitely saw Joe, way no, more. About... Saw way more than Ashley's titty. I that... couldn't pop my titty out in the dress I wore. No, I couldn't. Never mind. No, I'm talking at the birthday party. Definitely saw way more than a titty. The birthday party. Oh, Jen. Yeah. Um, my dress got ripped in half. It's very hard not to pop out a titty when my all. Oh, it was more than titties, and you were doing it on purpose. <laughs> Do you not remember? I don't remember. Oh. It didn't happen. <laughs> Okay, it did not happen then if you don't remember. Oh my god. That's how that works. Jen also doesn't remember popping out her butt either, so and she everything was, wearing, was popping out everywhere. She yeah. wore a short dress and then we bend over and she's like, Oh shit. Typically everyone kept it at in the VIP booth. So yeah. it's fine. Because you fancy like that. <laughs> nice hair flip. <laughs> so I guess now that we're talking about cells, what's what's everybody as as yeah. Does anybody have anything exciting coming up or, you know? I'm surviving. I'm doing the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Going to Dead Mouse on Saturday. That'll be wow. fun. Wow, you're so cool. I want to see Miro again. I wait to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> she went to Dead Mouse last time with me. <laughs> uh, Vegas was fun. It was Vegasy. That's, that's what they get through. Yep. We might be going to Cancun yeah. next month. Do an adults only clothing optional resort. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. It is not a swingers resort. <laughs> it attracts a lot of swingers, but oh, right. were you invited? Yeah. That was an invite. I wasn't invited either. It's very late. I'm sorry. No, it's too late. No, it's not. We haven't booked it yet. But you want to go next month? Yeah. Wow. No, we almost booked it last night. We're booking it like this week. I don't have how a... do I live my life like that? Because I couldn't take off next month. No, I could not. If, even if I wanted to. Maybe when we get rich and famous. Oh, so I'm ready. Sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> she <Can> we please <laughs> Temptations Resort in Cancun. Please sponsor us. We'll come down and show everybody a good time. Oh my God. We'll record the podcast. <laughs> yeah. The on, the, on the bar. They do oh. like helicopter competitions. For the guys, Did the wet t-shirt contest. Guys? It's a, it's, it looks like a spring break, nineteen nineties MTV. Did I send spring you guys break. the testicle festival like ad? <laughs> no. Um. No. So someone went around Minneapolis, and I don't think it was real because it was a Catholic church. I'm concerned. Wait, isn't that where they eat animal testicles? No. Like fry them up? Oh. Yeah. That's a Midwest, a very Midwest Her thing. world is just I know. I was, like, I was like, wait, I think I know where this is going. Ashley, it's not what you think it is. 
<laughs> well, I already I already figured that out when it, it was a Catholic church. I got really excited because they have a competition for the best testicles. And oh I was my like, God. are they going to bedazzle their vault? And oh I was gosh. like, already. I mean, that sounds like gonna, a great idea. I was going to bedazzle Colin, Miles, and Nikita, and we were going to send go. them out <laughs> into the world. And you just read this church. All and... of my dreams. Aww. I know. It, in the Midwest, a testicle festival is where they fry up animal full testicles. And... I don't want that. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> You should start your own testicle festival. Yeah. 21 plus. There you go. <laughs> right. Strict guidelines. I need at door. <laughs> we'll just have a kinks and cocktails testicle festival. It's Ashley's you leader. have to bedazzle your nuts. <laughs> well, it's or already in the, the planning. <laughs> it's already in the planning here. 2022. 2023. Yeah, 2023. We, we need some time. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs time? It's your living room. Don't come in my house. Please do not send us pictures of your <laughs> Please festival <don't>. testicles. <laughs> or do, but we'll find your mom. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've done that before. Go ahead. See what it was a stepmom, but it still worked. It was yeah, still a mom. Yeah. Yeah. You can send anyway. us money if yeah. you want to send us your testicle festival picture. Yeah, that's nice. that's fine. We'll read it out of ten if you send your money over. Yeah. Yep. Or I'll tell you it looks really bad. Those are your two options. I mean, Ashley isn't a Jamie, so. <laughs> so small. So sad. <laughs> you could do better. I don't. Not a good point. Not a good point. I don't know how you do better. Um, <laughs> dazzle it. Oh, it okay, dazzle it for me. Make it pretty. Glitter. Don't take it at that one angle that all of you guys do. <laughs> oh my god. You guys have two angles. It's holding some a can next to it. Or holding Or point of view style. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's not smacking it on the counter. It's not a monster can. We don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I am still seeing trash. No. Yes. Hey, I'm wearing a bite the ball. They're an emo band. They are. A local emo band. Wow. Well, <laughs> support local businesses. Like us. Small businesses. <laughs> yes, like us. <laughs> please. Yeah. Speaking of which, please follow us on all social media, Kinks and Cocktails. Please give us a five star rating. It's important. It helps. Tell a friend. Tell a pup friend. Tell all your friends. Tell your mom. Yeah. She's not gonna like it, but tell her. You never know. People's moms are. Yeah. I mean, we do get. You know what? Moms tend to have a kinky side as well, Ashley. Mom, please don't listen. To <laughs> <laughs> I just gave you some bad images in your head. I'm sorry. <laughs> My mom already told me she wasn't gonna listen to this podcast. It's okay. That's a good thing. My dad, on the other hand, I don't trust him. Hi, Ashley's dad. <laughs> Hi, dad. All right. So, is there of anything else? No. I think that wraps it up. Yeah. yeah. Wrap it up. Stay safe. Ooh. Oh, don't. Okay. <laughs> condom sponsor us. Any of them? Yes. Any condom. Any condom. <laughs> we can make our own condoms. No. No. Ex- <laughs> They're so cheap and terrible. No. We're not doing that. We can buy the expensive ones. No, we are also not doing that. Colin used to have ones that say, uh, have a nice ride. Oh, you mean like have them personalized? Yeah. Oh, right. I see. Not actually making them. And then hand them out. Have a nice like, ride for the pedicab. I like that. <laughs> I had a pedicab on and I said, have a nice ride. <laughs> they were colored. Now yeah. and later. Woo. All right. Well, bye, everyone. Bye. bye. Wolf. <laughs>